hope you're doing, all doing okay. Um, as you can see, another beautiful day here in the UK. It's been absolutely glorious for the last probably three or four weeks now. So um, yeah, it certainly has been south where I am anyway. Um, yeah, I'm back at the uh, everyone's favourite site. It's the little owl tree, and I've been photographing this little owl um, probably over the last week or two. Uh, I've got some images which I put up on social media. But I'm here today really to um, show you how I photographed the recent image, or well, this image that I'm putting up above me here now, um, of the wide angle little owl with the sunset behind. So you've got that, I don't know if you saw that image, but you've got, um, you've got the sunburst um, coming behind the owl as it's standing there on the ground. And really for me, it's a shot in a million. Um, probably one of my best little owl images I've ever taken. Um, it, it was planned, uh, it took me probably about a week to plan it and execute it and it really relied on everything coming together at that one precise moment. Um, I've got lots of other shots that night which uh, I'm equally as pleased with but that one sticks out as being for me a rather special shot and something that I will probably never forget taking actually. So um, so thanks, anyway thanks for all the comments I've, I've had on it, it's been, uh, been mind boggling actually, I've had so many uh, so many likes and comments and requests for prints and yeah so really really appreciate it so i'm here really to show you tonight um yeah a wide angle photography uh technique which i use for wildlife um i personally love the technique it gives a whole different perspective on the subject you get really down low and personal and you make the actual subject look very big in the frame but showing the actual broad landscape behind you so i love it some people hate it it's one of my favourite techniques, but not one that I do very often. So, and you can do it on really cheap kit. You don't have to have, you know, big expensive lenses like this. Um, you can do it on a kit lens. And in this example, I'm I'm going to be using a Fujifilm XT3 with the 18 to 55, I think, mil kit lens, which which came with the camera. So, so you, yeah, you don't need why um, expensive gear. You've probably got it yourself. So you just need a lot of patience, an obliging subject, and um, yeah, just a, a technique. It's a technique that can be difficult to execute, it takes, and but um, it's so worth it if it, put, if it all comes together. Okay, so I've had to sit behind this uh, bush here because the sun's just just right over behind there. And it's casting a horrible shadow on me, so I've sat behind it in a bit of shade. So. So what I want to do first is, uh, is take you through the kit that you'll need to cap capture that image that I, uh, I took the other day. So first thing you need is obviously a camera and it, more importantly for, for this technique anyway that I used you need a camera with a Wi-Fi uh, link. So for me Fujifilm X-T3 this is what I use and as I said before I've just got, I've just got the standard 18 to 55mm lens on here so next thing you'll need a little mini tripod like that this was about 10 quid off Amazon um, just a tiny little thing folds away quite neatly and um, yeah so it's just something to lift lift the camera on the ground and get that at a very low angle and support the camera one of these this is uh, I use this this is just a throw over hide just to make myself look a little bit uh, more discreet um, so the, the owl feels a little bit more relaxed so uh, with this owl it's, it is very used to people so as I said um, there's lots of human traffic through here every day, golfers, um, so it's a bit of a superstar this owl anyway, so, but I use this anyway just to just, just disguise myself a bit. And then mobile phone, so for this technique I use the, um, the Fuji, the Fujifilm app which so links the two together, so you, you get a link between the two and on here when you fire up the app you'll see the live view screen on here and you can change the camera settings, focus, and trigger the camera from here. So that's how I'll basically capture the image. There is another way you can use use this without the phone. Um, you can use obviously a, an infrared sensor, PIR sensor, or laser triggers as I've used in previous videos, where you've um, you know you've got a, a place where you want the owl to appear or a subject to appear. It breaks the beam, triggers the camera, and hey presto, you've got an image. The only problem with that with that is you've got to pre-focus on one specific spot and hope the owl. Uh, lands in that uh, that that precise spot. So at least when you're using a mobile phone, you can you know you can focus, focus, take a picture, and alter the settings as the as the light changes. So pretty simple. 
what's this, four, four, four or five bits of kit here, um, and that's it. So I'll take you over to the place where I, the owl, where the owl sits, um, comes down and, and sits, and uh, I'll show you what I had to work with on the night. So this is it. This is where the owl predominantly comes and sits. He either sits on these little red markers at the back here, which mark this walkway between the two fairways, um, or he sits up in his tree, which is uh, behind me here, just here, or there's a tree just here, which he comes and sits and looks around and surveys the area. So this, but this is where I'm guaranteed to see the owl, if anything. So, and he's a very curious owl. So if anything foreign, if a foreign object comes here, if a golfer leaves his bag here, for instance, he's often sitting on it. Um, you know, if I, if I, as you saw the other day in a, in a video that I put on on social media, I put my camera down for five minutes, turn my back to go and get something else. Lo and behold, he's come back and he's sitting on top of my camera. So, so this is uh, this is where I took that picture. And there's some decisions to make. How can I make, you know, what is a wooden walkway with some chicken wire on top look interesting in, in an image? So. I thought about it, you know, can I use leading lines? I took I took shots where the leading lines of the of the boards lead you into the image with the owl on the on the far side, and I'll show you that image in a minute um, up, up above me. Um, or could I use as I did in this picture that I'm you know, I'm really talking about? Could I use uh, the setting sun behind behind the owl um, to create more interest? And it was one of those images that took everything made everything to come together at one at the one moment um to pull off and as i say it took quite a while quite a bit of planning um but I've, thankfully i did it i've just seen the uh, little owl flying across the uh, golf course so he's uh, he's around and uh, hopefully we'll get some images of him soon so Anyway, back to the uh, the image I took the other day. Um, composition, it's it's a tough thing to, to to you know create. Really, I had to give it a lot of thought. But um, there are a few decisions to make really. And for me, when I saw that shot um, of the sun setting um, behind the owl, potentially behind the owl, I made a conscious decision that I was um, going to expose for the sky. So I wanted to, there was, the sky was absolutely beautiful, as you can see. There's some setting, there was some clouds, the setting sun and I wanted to make, hold that detail. Now if I'd exposed for the owl to get the owl in, in the correct exposure, the sky would have been blown out. So I made a conscious decision that I was going to expose for the sky and then recover the owl essentially in Lightroom afterwards. So basically lift the shadows by a stop to bring out the detail in the owl. Um, there is another way I could have done it. Of course I could have put some, I could have put a bit of light on the owl. Um, that's not really my scene. I don't particularly like that idea. Um, I have, I mean, you've seen me do continuous lighting with ours, which I think is absolutely fine, but it wouldn't work in this situation. There wouldn't be enough light to uh, over overpower the ambient light. And um, the only other alternative was to use a bit of flash, which given the light levels are quite low, I decided that wasn't really what I was wanted to do really. Um, so yeah, as I said, I, I exposed the sky to hold the detail the, the owl obviously came out then underexposed, which I then recovered in, in Lightroom um, by lifting the shadows and revealing the owl in all its glory. So that's how I processed the image and how I, my thought process and I knew what I wanted to, at the end of it. Um, the other decision I had to make was the aperture that I used. So I knew that I wanted a starburst effect and um, to get that you need a very small aperture. Um, <clears throat> and that image I shot at f22, which is the uh, maximum aperture on this on this lens and that gave that lovely starburst um, obviously with that you got very little light coming in so I had to increase the ISO to get a half decent shutter speed to freeze the bird itself um, and that also has the effect of giving lots of detail from front to back so um, the bird is all is pretty much all in focus and the, and the scene behind is in focus whereas if I'd chosen a to shoot wide open say at f4 the bird would have been in focus but it only had to move slightly and then it would have been out of focus and all the scene behind is end blurred and out of focus so it's it's a personal choice for me wide angle wildlife photography is showing the scene as well as the subject and that scene should be predominantly in focus but it's again it's personal choice i chose a to shoot at f22 because i wanted the starburst effect and also i wanted the background in focus as well okay so now as i mentioned earlier it's now really now about setting up um, the camera in position so 
here it is obviously got the tripod on the bottom now and then now they just need to place this in a and look at the composition through the LCD at the back and I was sort of looking at the composition imagining okay if the bird was there um, then it would be it'd make a nice picture but it's by sheer chance that it turns up there so you know so it really is you know you know you're hoping a lot that it's actually gonna um, gonna land where you want it to be more often than not it doesn't it lands on top of my camera and, I don't, and it doesn't do anything or it doesn't land at all and just it's just a case of a waiting game really um, so yes you basically you know set your exposure you kind of visualize the image as you want it to be set the exposure and then you um, basically connect to your phone go and uh, sit under a bird, under a throw of a hide and wait many hours um, which can be many hours it can be many days before you get the shot on that particular night he was he was very active and I got a, quite a few images but uh, of different positions just changed the camera camera position as I went through the evening but um, yeah very special moment it's a technique I really really enjoy as I said and um, yeah why not give it a try it's a uh, it's a very simple technique as I said you can use motion sensors as well to trigger to trigger the camera but then you're reliant on the actual um, you've been pre-focusing obviously and um, yeah you, you don't have so much control whereas you know with uh, with this you can you can pick your focus change the settings as you go and as the light changes and hope for the best and fingers crossed you get a nice image and with that and all uh, hopefully that makes sense I'm gonna set up the big camera and I'm gonna set up this one and we're gonna try and get both sort of 600 mil on the on the full frame 1dx uh, images which I like to do sometimes he comes running down here and you've seen those shots I put up where he's running down the boardwalk and I'm getting shots when I'm sitting over there in sort of mid-flight which uh, I really enjoy and also um, try for shots with the old the old wide angle technique then you can see that the uh, the lit well you can't see obviously but the little owl is sitting just up in this tree here it's just flown over the top of my head and sitting in that tree so I'm gonna get set up and um, yeah, hopefully get some images. The light is uh, getting quite good now, so time to uh, time to get set up and go under the uh, throw of a hide. Okay, I hope you can see this. So I've I've set up the uh, the XT3 now in a composition that I like, and I've now connected it to my phone. And you can I don't know if you can see on the screen here. There's the you can just about see the live view of the what the camera is seeing, and down the bottom here, just there, you can see them just are the camera settings which you can change: ISO, shutter speed, uh, aperture, and white balance. So the standard stuff that you would change, and I will change those as the light levels drop to. Uh, to get the correct exposure so that's it really so now i'm gonna i'm gonna sit under this uh this throw of a hide here i'm gonna try and capture some images and some video on uh, on the big 600 plus some wide angle at the same time and uh hopefully we'll come out with some decent images this evening if i don't get anything i'll certainly put some images up at the end of uh, wide angle shots that i've taken in the past and um and obviously some little owls that i've captured lots of lots of images of those with this this big lens here so You'll definitely see some pictures and hopefully some video as well. So uh, time to get under the cover. So I'll see you soon. So the, uh, the little house just come in. Um, I didn't manage to get a wide angle shot yet. So um, I'll keep trying, but I'm definitely got some video at the moment. I've got him sitting up in this tree here above me. So, um, so which is nice to see. Hopefully we'll get some more, but uh, I'm going to keep quiet because he's around and uh, yeah, there are people around unfortunately so I don't know whether that's disturbing him a bit but uh, yeah, I'm going to keep quiet anyway, he's, he's definitely about it.
don't know if you can uh, see that. But I'm trying to recreate the shot that I did the other day. So I've got that sun just setting. I've got the starburst there, it's just there. If you can see it on film. I don't know if focus that close, there it is. There's a the sunburst. So let's see if we can recreate that shot. It would be uh, amazing to do it again. Um, but, you know, nothing's ever guaranteed in wildlife photography. But the owl is showing quite well. He's, uh, he's been flying around. He hasn't really settled much yet, but uh, let's see what happens. As you can see, the, uh, the sun has set now. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't manage to get the uh, wide angle shot of the owl that we wanted to. Um, but that's the way it goes. It's, uh, it's wildlife photography. And as I said, that shot that I got the other day took a long time to get. So that's why I was so pleased with it. And yeah, so I have got some video. I've got some lovely video of the, of the owl hanging around the boardwalk and running up and down it and sitting in the tree. So I'll, I'll put that amongst this, uh, this vlog. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. We will be back. I'm going to come back here all year round, so I'm going to bring you the owl story throughout the year. Um, we can watch them as they, as the owlets develop and they start to branch and then venture outside the uh, outside the nest. So we'll capture them on video, hopefully, and some images. So I'll bring you along um, with that with those trips as well. So, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching this one. Um, hope you took something out of it. Please do go ahead and and try try that wide angle technique. And if you need any advice or help. Just email me, connect with me through social media, leave me a comment and I'm more than happy to answer. I won't have all the answers, but I'll certainly do my best to, uh, to help you. And uh, hopefully you'll get some decent images and uh, enjoy the technique. Um, do look at, um, you can use, as I said, use, you don't have to sit there with a the mobile phone waiting. You can use um, triggers if you've got them, so you can always try them. And uh, good luck with it. And uh, yeah. So I say the sun's going down so I'm going to probably hang around for another half an hour and then head home so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye for now